Recently, several high-profile right-leaning activists have either been denied entry to the U.S. or their pre-clearance under the ESTA system has been revoked. It's starting to look like a pattern, so I want to address these situations and dispel some rumors, but also acknowledge some others. But before we get to that, visit my shop, Agitator Coffee and Books, at the URL agitatorbooks.com. And support me on Subscribestar, subscribestar.com slash laurel. The four right-leaning people who have recently had their ESTA pre-clearance revoked or have been denied entry to the U.S. are Tommy Robinson, Jack Buckby, Martin Selner, and Avi Yamini. The first one I want to talk about is Tommy Robinson. Tommy is banned from the United States. He is permanently inadmissible. There's been some talk about the other three being banned. To my knowledge, none of them are banned. They have some other issues that I'll get into, but Tommy Robinson is clearly banned. He has some criminal history. There was some fighting. Some of it was political and some of it wasn't. There was a possession of drugs and um, some mortgage fraud. So there's been a number of criminal cases for him that would make him inadmissible. Now, if that was the only thing, he could apply for a waiver of inadmissibility at the consulate under INA 212D3. I don't know whether they would have granted it or not. Maybe they would say no. Maybe he tried to get the waiver and it was denied. But in order to get in, he decided to commit fraud. So he got a fraudulent passport. It was another British passport with his picture in it. And he got to the airport and they run it through the machine. And it's actually machine readable. And the picture of the person that the passport belongs to shows up on the computer screen of the CBP official. And that picture is not Tommy. So he got taken into custody at the airport and he actually escaped from custody, which I've never heard of happening for anybody else. I suppose maybe it happens every now and then, but none of my clients ever escape from custody. So that's the only time I've ever heard of it actually happening. So he escaped from custody. He saw whoever he was going to see, and then he went back to England. That is just like they're never going to give him the waiver after that after not only he had the criminal history but also he committed fraud and then he escaped from custody so if he applied now for a waiver i i can't imagine they would give it to him really the only way he would be able to get a waiver is basically if he was elected to parliament or if he was um if somehow he gained a lot of recognition and uh, credibility in the UK. I know there's factions that certainly support him now, but it would have to be more than that. And then maybe for political reasons, they might give him a waiver. But as it is right now, even people who are sympathetic to him in the government would probably be, be very hesitant to grant him a waiver simply because that history is very, very severe. So that's Tommy. Let's talk about, talk about some of the other situations. Let's go over the most recent one that occurred, the one that prompted this video, which is Avi Yamini. There's a video with him talking to Dave Rubin where he explains exactly what happened. Let's look at that. Now, as soon as I've come to the, uh, to the immigration desk, the, something's obviously popped up on his screen as soon as he's uh, swiped my passport. And he goes, oh, you just need to come with me. We need to update some details about your, uh, about your, I think it's called SDV, like the visa waiver program that we have here with Australia. They open the door to this back room. There's two FBI agents. You know, there's one, a man in a suit and then a woman behind a computer. And uh, they've shown their ID, go FBI. I, look, I, I saw that and I just cracked up laughing. I looked at him and I just go, Comedy Central. Comedy Central is the informant, yeah? It, and he just responded straight away. And this is when people ask me, how do you know it's Comedy Central? Well, he's gone. He said to me, literally, we've received a number of complaints from Comedy Central about certain things that we just want to clarify. And look, by the end of it, the FBI had cleared me. The FBI were laughing with me about it. They actually said to me, I understand why you want to come and clear your name. Once that happened... It obviously triggered uh, whatever process the uh, Border Protection have, which is to go through everything within your visa, visa or visa waiver, whatever it is that you're coming in on. So what it turns out is two years ago when I filled out this visa waiver application online, 
which I want to point out, I had come even seven months ago. I was in New York. Um, I was, I'd, I'd been in the States on this same visa from that same application. So there was no problem and it was an absolute technicality. So what they found is when you fill out these visa waiver um, forms online, there's a bunch of crazy questions. And, you know, you're just like, I'm, I read them out. No, no, no. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not this. I'm not a neo-Nazi. I'm not there to create violence. I've never been. So you just do no, 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 no. One of them happened to say, um, have you ever been denied a visa to the US? Now, about 15 years ago, um, I came on a visa waiver and right after I got back to Australia, I applied for a visa. They thought that implied that I, I was trying to come there to live. So I was trying to immigrate to the US and I got denied a visa. Now, I, I don't know. I don't even remember filling in the form, so I don't know. But that happened. Um, and I said that openly to the, uh, the, uh, the Border Protection Officer. That technicality means that it makes the, the application void enough. It means, so they were saying to me, look, you're not getting banned. There's no, I can't use the visa waiver program anymore. You've got to actually have a visa because you have been denied. Now, just to remember, this, this is a technicality on a technicality. Let me take a minute to explain what ESTA is, what the visa waiver program is, and what a visitor's visa is. Normally, when anybody from another country wants to come to the U.S. for a visit, whether it's for business or for pleasure, they have to apply for a B visitor's visa. All the non-immigrant visas are start with a letter. The visitor's visa is a B visa. So you would normally apply at the consulate. And whenever somebody's applying for a, um, a visa that has a strict non-immigrant intent requirement, they have to prove that they have non-immigrant intent. Okay, so what does that mean? It is presumed that anybody trying to come to the U.S. at all for any reason is coming to stay. That's a presumption of immigrant intent. An immigrant is someone who comes to stay. A non-immigrant is someone who's coming temporarily. So when somebody is applying for a visitor's visa, there's a presumption that they're coming to stay and they must affirmatively prove that they're not. When you come on a visitor's visa, the maximum for the visitor for pleasure is six months. If it's a visit, a visit for business, it can be anywhere from a couple of days to a year. But they'll, they'll grant that authorized stay for that period of time. When somebody's here on a visitor's visa, they can apply to extend their status and maybe stay for another six months as long as they can prove non-immigrant intent. So then they can stretch it out to a year. And also, if somebody's here on a visitor's visa, they're eligible to try to change non-immigrant status. So if they get into school or they get accepted to a school, they can apply to change from a B visa to an F student visa. If they get a job, you know, it depends. It's actually really hard to do, but technically they should be able to change from a visitor's visa to maybe uh, an H-1B or something along those lines that would allow them to stay. Okay, so that's the visitor's visa. When somebody comes on the visa waiver program, they don't have to apply for the visa at the consulate. They don't need a visa at all. You basically just come using your passport and your visa requirement is waived. It's the visa waiver program. The terms are stricter. Whereas when somebody comes on the visitor's visa, they can stay for six months. If somebody's coming on the visa waiver program, it's 90 days. It's not six months. It's a maximum of 90 days and you cannot extend. You also cannot change status. So if you come in on a B visa and then you get a job, it depends. You know, I don't want to say this is easy to do. It's actually really hard to do, but technically you should be able to do it. You can change your non-immigrant status from a B visa to something else. If you come on the visa waiver program, you cannot. You cannot change status. Whenever somebody from a visa waiver country wants to apply for a visitor's visa, the consulate is instantly suspicious. Why isn't the visa waiver program good enough? Why is 90 days not enough? And their suspicion is you want the more lenient rules of the visitor's visa because you want to extend status, you want to change status, you want to do something else that you wouldn't be allowed to do on the visa waiver program and they want to know what that thing is. So it's actually very hard to get, not impossible, very hard to get a visitor's visa if you're from 
a visa waiver country. And as a side note, what's ESTA? ESTA is not a visa, it's not a status. When what you're doing with ESTA is you're getting pre-clearance for the visa waiver program. So nobody comes to the US on ESTA. You would come on the visa waiver program. ESTA is a pre-clearance system. So Abi Yemeni got the pre-clearance and he got to the airport and then he was taken into custody because of uh, Comedy Central had complained to the FBI that they thought this guy was going to come and attack them. It is actually a ground of inadmissibility if you're coming to the U.S. to commit a crime. That's what Comedy Central was accusing him of or at least wanted the FBI to check it out. So the FBI questioned him, determined he's not coming to the U.S. to commit a crime and told CBP go ahead and let him in. But because of that scrutiny, CBP had looked at more thoroughly at his entire ESTA application and determined that he had said no to the question, have you ever applied for a visa before, when actually he had. Because of that misinformation on his application, he's no longer eligible for the visa waiver program. Ironically, now that he's no longer eligible for the visa waiver program, he will have an easier time getting a visitor's visa because now he satisfies that question that the consul is going to have. Why don't you just use the visa waiver program? Then he can say, I can't because I made a mistake on my ESTA form and now I'm not allowed to use it. So I have to apply for a visitor's visa. And the consulate is going to say, okay, that makes sense. And then their suspicion comes way, way down. And they're actually, ironically, more likely to grant the visitor's visa now. Let's turn our attention to the other two cases, and that is Jack Buckby, who is a reporter for Rebel Media, and Martin Sellner, who's an activist in Austria. Both of them are in similar situations because they're engaged to US citizens, but it's a little more complicated than that. Martin Sellner was going back and forth just fine on the visa waiver program, and then after he was investigated, Related to the Christchurch shooting, the shooter had sent him some money a long time ago. And so after the shooting, there was an investigation. And it was after that investigation that his ESTA preclearance was revoked. And I will let Jack Buckby tell you a little bit about what happened with him. My name is Jack Buckby. I'm a British conservative. And for the last two years, me and my American fiance, Martina Marcota, have been the target of a harassment campaign by Antifa with a view to destroying our relationship destroying our lives and getting me banned from America so we can't be together. And that's exactly what they did. For the last two years, I've been unable to enter the United States. Um, but as I was applying for my ticket, I checked my ESTA online to see if it needed updating and it said travel not authorized. So I tried to update my visa, I, I, my ESTA. I, I paid the fee and again, it said travel not authorized. Now, this could have been canceled, this ESTA, anywhere between November 2016, when I was in the United States, I was in New York hosting an election night party, um, celebrating Donald Trump's win, um, and January um, of 2017. On the 8th of February, my fiance Martina and I received a phone call from the New York offices of the FBI, not the kind of phone call you ever expect to get. And they told me that um, submissions tips had been submitted to the FBI claiming that I was a terrorist and I was planning to get into the United States to commit terrorist atrocities. Um, long discussion with the FBI ensued. Obviously, they knew all about me because they've been looking me up and it's the FBI and they know everything. And they looked me up and they spoke to me and they confirmed with me that they knew this was a fake tip. So what is similar about these two situations is that both of them are engaged to US citizens. That increases their suspicion of immigrant intent and even if you had ESTA preclearance and you got to the airport in the US, if they find out that you're engaged to a US citizen, they could put you back on the plane. That did in fact happen to one of my clients. Actually, she had a B visa and she showed up at the airport in the US and she was wearing her engagement ring because she didn't think anything of it. And the CBP official said, oh, you're engaged, where's your fiance? And she said, he's a US citizen, he's waiting for me on the other side. And they said, okay, back on the plane. But what they have in common goes beyond that. It's not only that they were engaged to US citizens, it's that something political happened that caused a review of their cases where it was revealed or whether the government discovered that they were engaged to US citizens, even though it was something political 
that triggered the review. It wasn't the political thing that caused their ESTA preclearance to be revoked. And I think it's very similar to Avi Yamini. It was something political that caused the review, but it wasn't the political thing that caused him to be turned away. And incidentally, in Avi Yamini's case, as an aside, Tim Pool was saying that he was deported. It doesn't sound like he was deported. Um, that's actually a very different process. You can get an expedited removal at the airport. That's when CBP's being kind of nasty. For most people, they will, will allow them to withdraw their application for admission, and then that's not a removal. They do have to get back on the plane. What's the difference? The difference is if you go through an expedited removal, you are banned. Then, then you are banned, and then you can't just go get a visitor's visa. So it is actually very different then you would have to apply for a waiver of inadmissibility, either under D3 or you'd have to file an I-212. So it's actually very different to, uh, my understanding of what happened is Avi Yamini was allowed to withdraw his application for admission and he was not deported, he was not removed. He did have to get back on the plane, he was refused entry. This is my assessment of what is going on. There is a pattern with these four people. Tommy Robinson is actually not a part of the pattern. He's inadmissible for completely different reasons. He would have been banned regardless of politics. For the other three, it's not politics that's causing them to have to apply for the visitor's visa. It's something in their history where anybody, um, if the government knew of those facts, would tell them they had to apply for a visitor's visa and they can't come in on the visa waiver program. However, also for all three of them, it was something political that triggered the review. It was either um, some investigation going on for them or some political opponents telling the government to go and look at them. So that's what triggered the review. So politics does come into play, but it's not, as far as I can tell, anything from the U.S. government that indicates to me that there's a new policy in place to deny entry to people of this political persuasion. It is people reporting them and other things happening that is causing them to go under review. Is that fair that Antifa or Comedy Central or somebody else can trigger these reviews, which in the end do get them to be denied entry under the visa waiver program? It's not fair, but I don't want to say that the government should stop investigating when they have a report. I don't like where that might lead us. So I think we should accept that right-leaning people are more likely to have that scrutiny and for any detail, any mistake to cause problems. Because immigration law is extremely particular, especially when you're trying to enter that, that time, that moment when you're entering the country, they're very, very particular. So you need to go over your cases with a fine tooth comb. And I would also recommend for right-leaning people even if they're from visa waiver program countries, that they apply for visitor's visas at the consulate and that they say there's been this history of political opponents reporting or making accusations or whatever that's causing greater scrutiny and just cite these other cases and say here, here are these other people who wound up not being able to use the visa waiver program. In fact, Avi Yamini got turned away at the airport. I don't want that to happen to me. As long as you are telling the consulate that, you're giving them a reason why you're applying for the visitor's visa, then their suspicion comes way down because normally they would say, why are you applying for a visitor's visa when it looks like you're eligible for the visa waiver program? And they become very suspicious of what your intentions are. If you give them a valid reason that makes sense, they'll say, oh, okay, I understand you're, you do politics and that could cause problems. I wouldn't say I'm a right-leaning person. I would say I do political work and there's been a history of political opponents you know, playing games and I just want to be sure everything's going to be okay. That's all for today. Mm -hmm.